Hello, mamas. Welcome back to Drama Mama. Elon Musk bought Twitter. We knew it was happening. We knew it was coming. Well, we didn't really know. He bought it, and then he pulled out for a minute, and he was like, <laughs> just kidding. And then they sued his ass, because you can't just do that. You can't say you're going to do a silly little thing like buy a $40 billion company and then pull out like you're canceling your dinner res reservation at Cheesecake Factory. Like, you can't do that. And before we get too crazy and too deep into this, I should say, I don't know jack shit about business or anything like that, but I think that maybe is why I'm qualified to talk about this. I want to start off by saying that I didn't realize how irrelevant, like how truly irrelevant Twitter was until very recently. I had kind of whiffs of it being irrelevant and like, little tiny moments of think of realizing like oh actually like literally four people are on this app like genuinely no one is using this but it really hit me when i started seeing graphs of like users like it would show like youtube or tiktok or face facebook and then twitter was like so so low on the list of at like apps with users like there's genuinely three souls and like someone's grandma on twitter which is really crazy to me because twitter used to be the place where everything started every meme started on twitter um like there was a big lull between vine and tiktok where there was just no other place for your good old memes to flourish and to sprout so twitter was where it was at genuinely there was so much going on there all the time and not only was there memes like that is where you would get world altering news that's where like the election results were um that that's where you would talk about your favorite tv show and it was kind of like a a perfect little meeting place for everyone but and and i know i just said that twitter is like literally irrelevant so you might be thinking okay why are you talking about it shut the heck up no because twitter to me is one of, like, the big, like, four tentpole social medias. And I think we're about to lose it. I genuinely do not think Twitter is going to be around in, like, any capacity that it is now in a year, even. And it is because Elon Musk is running it into the ground. So let's dig into it, okay? So what 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 really has Elon Musk changed about the app or what is he planning to change? Let's start with that. Um right off the bat, he said that he wanted to make it so anyone can get verified and you might be thinking, "Whoa, epic and awesome." No. Because he wants to charge you $8 to get verified. And not only that, being verified on Twitter used to like signify like they it means you were verified it means that account is you you couldn't pay to have it done when I got verified boy oh boy was it the biggest process on earth um I had a Twitter contact that I reached out to and then it was months of me sending them press articles like article because basically you have to have articles written about you like news stuff saying you are important person that like deserves to be um damn like have a four pixels next to your name so people think you're a big dog on twitter.com like it was a process and um they eventually opened up to like a little bit more people and it got a little bit easier but still like very secretive very coveted not a lot of people were living the verified life i am but elon musk wants to make it so you pay eight dollars a month and you get a verified badge and not only like for people who have never been verified before people who are verified right now ha are gonna have to pay eight dollars so my ass is gonna have to crack open the bank account and pay eight dollars a month so i mean i don't like okay whatever i'm enough i mean i'll i'm in an okay financial position to do that even though i think it's, it is a waste of money it is literally pixels on a screen but it made me start to think about what elon musk's view of the company is and i think he's literally just viewing this from like the most businessy perspective ever i don't want to get too deep into the business aspects of it because it bores me to high hell but basically 
as you know, Elon Musk is a wild card. He's tweeted transphobic shit before. He has he just tweets like conspiracy theories like out of left field from websites that aren't even credible in the slightest. Um, so. Uh, and also, the second that he bought the freaking website, like, uses, usages of the N-word went up, like, 500%. So, it's already becoming in a, ho a hostile environment for advertisers, which, as you know, keeps the lights on at Twitter, is pretty much the only way they make money, is running ads. So, advertisers are leaving, and he is thinking, okay, well, we're gonna have to start charging $8 for people to get verified. And I think... Where he's just completely dead wrong in that is, well, A, that is a waste of money, stupid thing to spend money on. Am I still going to do it? Yes, because I work so damn hard for my verification. I will not let lack of $8 take it away. But that's besides the point. Like, flame me about being a hypocrite another time. <laughs> he is just assuming that everyone wants to spend $8. On, on Twitter, on something like literally, that, that was once free. Like, for example, most people are going to really second guess spending even $10 on Netflix, which A, is a service that didn't exist before. You just did not used to have access to like, so, like thousands of movies and TV shows. But B, like, it's, it's, it's still a lot of money. Like, it's not to, the things that he's offering on Twitter pretty much completely used to be free and available before verified. Not so much. I mean, like it is free to get verified, I guess, but like definitely difficult. You have to like be a, a notable figure. Um, so and honestly, like, listen, I'm all for like destroying the verified meta like having accounts that are like somehow like quote unquote better than other accounts i think that's dumb as shit and i think it should go but in and having it be in the form of anyone can be verified if you spend eight dollars no that's stupid i think it should be like twitter or t tinder <laughs> so many apps that all sound the same tinder where being verified literally just means you're verified. Like, they take a picture and verify that your face is, like, who's on the account. That makes sense to me. That's all you really need it for. Like, you just need to know if the person that you're interacting with online is a real person. Beyond that, who cares? But the crazy thing is, Elon Musk laid off 50% of his employees already, and... The verification process already to, like, verify people's identities with your ID and everything was overloaded. Like, they barely verify people or the pe they're doing it very slowly because it takes a lot of work and a lot of time to verify each person's individual identity. That is not happening if everyone can spend $8 to get verified. So literally, you're just paying it and it's immediately being applied to your account. It's not like there's going to be a verification process that is verifying that you're a human being. It's not even being verified anymore. It's just getting like four blue pixels next to your name, which is bonkers. Like, what is the point? What What is actually the point anymore? Call that, like, literally call that, like, it, it shouldn't be V. It should be D for dumbass bitches that have eight dollars to burn. Like that's all it should be. But <laughs> sorry, that was the biggest tangent of my life. Rewinding, 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 rewinding. I believe that Elon Musk is approaching this from the very distorted view of Twitter that he has right now, which is like I I see him as like one of those little NFT nerds that like just sees everything from like a money perspective and not really a social perspective and also by the way <laughs> elon musk does not strike me as the biggest social person ever so the fact that we're just entrusting him with one of the largest social media platforms in the world fucking bonkers um <laughs> who thought that was a good idea but you know, he bought it, so we don't really have a choice, which is also just another crazy thing about 
the phenomenon of billionaires and them just being able to buy things. Like, that is crazy that you can just buy Twitter. Like, that is such a central part in so many people's lives and businesses and lifestyles and even governments. And you can just buy that and then just change whatever you want. Maybe that's... Maybe that as a way of going forward with technology fully integrated in our lives, maybe that's not the best way that we should be evolving as a species. Maybe we should have, like, some sort of regulations that doesn't let billionaires turn their turn the entirety of Twitter into their literal finsta. Have we ever thought about that, Joe Biden? No, because he doesn't have any thoughts in his head, I don't think. You know those things that, okay, you probably don't know, but I had one of these things growing up where it was like a battery voltage test where you could like test a double A or triple A battery's voltage and see if it's still got some juice in it. Um, and you would just put the two prongs to either side of the battery and then it would tell you like, hey, this there's a lot going on in here. I feel like if you put both sides to Joe Biden's head, uh, it would literally go pee like there would be nothing. There'd be no activity at all. But that's besides the point. Please still go out and vote. Hi. Anyways, let's get back to Elon Musk. Um, I also see a lot of people freaking out though and being like, the day, the day that Elon Musk takes over Twitter, I'm gone. Like, okay, let's calm down. <laughs> let's calm down. I think that the. At least the way I'm going to approach this whole situation is just using it until it dies, which I really think it's going to do. I don't think, like, <laughs> these people having these big dramatic boycotts and be like, my Twitter account is going to be, I'm deleting my Twitter today because Elon Musk, who is going to be running it? Like, okay, bye. Like, there's still a hundred million other people on this app. But... It definitely has had its heyday. Like, with or without Elon Musk, it is already on the rocks. Um, it's like a very specific kind of audience that's on Twitter. It is nothing like how TikTok is now, where, like, everyone and their mother is using it. Like, Twitter is very much just almost for sports. K-pop, like, random TV shows that, for some reason, just have a huge Twitter following. And, like the four people making jokes on Twitter. That's, like, literally all it is now. There really isn't much else on that app. It is not like how Instagram was, say, in 20, 2015, 2016, like, when all these celebrities were joining it, or how TikTok is now, where, like, everything starts on there. Like, every meme starts on there. Every trend starts on there. Um, Every... Every celebrity is on there and every just every average citizen is on TikTok. It's not like that. It's 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 very much dwindling down into nothing. And it makes me sad because I loved Twitter. I really, really did love Twitter. And I I think another reason why it's dying is it really never like jumped the generation to like Gen Z. Well, I think most Gen Z people have it, but like I'd say younger gen z like 2004 on like gen z that are like still teenagers or younger they're not on twitter and i really like i really understood that when i started doing um i'd say like tweet your drama at me using the hashtag drum mama podcast and i would have the, like literally every episode that would go out there'd be 10 dms and I, I would get 10 twitter dms of people like who <laughs> didn't know how to use Twitter because they had just downloaded it, don't downloaded Twitter that day, and they were DMing me like, I don't know how to do this, but and then they, they would like DM me the hashtag. I was like, what? What? <laughs> Y'all are acting like seventy year old women that just got Twitter for the first time, but it 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 really is crazy. It fully is like missing the new generation, and. I couldn't wrap my head around it at first. I was like, how is that how is that possible? Like, first of all, it was like denial. I was like, damn, I'm getting old. Like, I'm still on Twitter and like literally no one is using that. But um it makes sense, I guess. Like, it's not really as appealing as 
TikTok is to Gen Z. And I think part of that is because Twitter is just so, <laughs> so reading focused. And I'm going to sound so boomery when I say this, but it's like, like Gen Z does not want to read. Obviously, there's still Gen Z people reading. But like, if you're if, if you're handed TikTok with like unlimited scrolling of content, that is exactly what you want to watch versus like Twitter, which is like the trending tab, which has a bunch of random things and like world news events that you kind of have to like be interested in all of it people are going to pick the tiktok so i can't blame them like it makes sense but i do think like with twitter being gone or twitter like just going down the drain there is like some important things that we're going to be missing that like tiktok and instagram cannot fill the void with and i think that main thing is news and I know you might be thinking like Twitter, like for news, no, 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 like that is terrible. That is full of conspiracy theories, which is partly true, but genuinely Twitter is where I get almost all of my news. I do not trust, <laughs> I do not trust the, the wenches that will do the classic TikTok where it's like, It'll be some random, random person, like random person. And they'll be like, you guys need to check this out. Then they point to the screen and it's like the green screen video of like some like news thing taken out of context. And then everyone in the comments is freaking out. Like as much as I, I am like glad of how like social media is progressing. I do think we still need journalism. Maybe this is just because I did a year of journalism in school, but relying on word of mouth for news is a horrible way to go about things <laughs> a horrible way like the amount having random people just report the news you'd be like in case you missed it north korea just sent 40 missiles towards the united states like someone could genuinely say that on tiktok and it could get a million views and all the comments would be like <gasps> Oh my god, I'm literally gonna go to the grocery store and and buy out all the like I, I'm digging a hole into the ground to build a nuclear bunker. Like the gullibility, I think I've talked about this before, but the gullibility on TikTok and like the hive mind nature of people just like wanting to believe like anything that anything that seems compelling on TikTok is it's insane. It really is insane. And like I I want to, I want to pull like devil, it's like play the devil's advocate and be like, well, like I can see why, but like, that's just why we need Twitter. Cause obviously someone can say something they can be like, oh my God, like they could say world war three just started. And then they could link to an article from like a trusted news source, like the New York to, I don't know, like a trusted news source. And then you can read more into it. But the problem with TikTok is when people like make these news TikToks or they're like, in case you missed this, a UFO literally just landed in the middle of Ohio. Like it, it almost feels to people like that's the end all and the be all. Like you don't need to go and like verify those facts. And even worse, you can go into the comments. And if there's even like, even if the top comment is just some random person be like, yo, this is crazy. I always knew Ohio was, uh, was insane or something like the 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 hive mind of the way people are so hive minded that they will just read the first comment and just agree with it no matter what it is is so crazy and i've seen it like countless times and countless examples where like i'll know what the person is talking about in the video is like dead wrong and then i'll see a comment that's agreeing with them and they will all just bandwagon onto that viewpoint and like not even second guess like if the person who made the original video is like credible or is telling the truth or isn't full of shit it's so crazy so i do think that with twitter being gone we will be like missing out on that we're we're gonna be in like a whole new era of random people from the middle of buttfuck ohio that are just like <laughs> reporting the news and, like, th th that's one thing, but the other thing is, 
like obviously people have all sorts of different biases whether you're left wing or right wing or whatever like goddamn wing on the birdie wire like i like whatever you're gonna have a bias which affects like how you report the news or tell a story and that is obviously something that's like prevalent in like regular media like Everyone knows that, like, CNN is very left-wing and Fox News is very right-wing. And you have to take that with a grain of salt when you get news from them. But you don't always know what way someone leans when they're just making a TikTok, when it's some random person that you've never seen before. They're literally a stranger. Like, how, how are you supposed to know why they're saying what they're saying or how they're interpreting a news event? So... I'm sad that we're going to be into going to be going into an era without Twitter and being able to like go we're going to have to go out of our way to fact check things and like see if what we're listening to is real and what we're hearing from people is real which is very annoying cuz Twitter you could literally just click the article that someone was like responding to and then you would see it and you would know it what like if they were full of shit or not. But now that's not the case. You're you have to exit the TikTok app, search up whatever they're talking about, and then find like a news article or something on said matter. And 99% of people are not gonna do that. When you've scrolled three videos, you're already locked into TikTok. You're not you don't want to leave the app unless like l- like mom's calling you for dinner or something. Like you're so latched into it that people aren't gonna go to just like be the morality police or that's not the saying (laughs) the 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 fact checking police like you're not going to do that so back to elon (laughs) back to elon musk um i not to psychoanalyze him or anything but i think at the end of the day he's just a troll i think he's get he gets off on being able to play with society at such a grand scale i think he finds that very entertaining being able to just you know 40 billion dollars is pretty much pocket change to him which is such a crazy thing to say but i think he just gets off on being a troll i think he gets off on being seen as the kind of king of twitter or the king of trolls maybe so It's so crazy to me that now he just runs Twitter. Someone who is definitely qualified to run Tesla and run SpaceX, like his other companies. You won't ever see me like like saying that that, that's a, a bad match, a bad pair. That makes sense. He, I mean, he definitely has had his blunders before, um... Not once again, not to get too businessy, but he'll just say the most outlandish shit and then like cause harm to the company. So like obviously he's done that, but at the same time he's built these companies into insane juggernauts that like l- like Tesla's basically run the electric car game right now. Like when you think of electric cars, you think of Teslas. So he's good at that. Does not mean he's going to be good at running Twitter, in my opinion. And I don't even know if I don't personally think that any one person should be in charge of these social media companies. I think when you have something that's so like influential on society as a whole and even just like governments, I think that that should be a democracy and like a will of the people kind of situation. I think we should be able to vote who the head of Twitter is, who the head of Instagram is, who the head of YouTube is. It otherwise it's literally a dictatorship. It's no different than like Xi Jinping, I think is his name, like the leader of China, just turning that shit into a dictator dictatorship. When it is so prevalent in our society, when so much stuff and so much human communication happens within these social media platforms, why are we letting one person run the entire thing? I'm in a hotel right now and there's someone literally right outside my door so that's so interesting did i forget to mention that i'm in tokyo right now i don't think i did hi (laughs) i got y'all that 
This has been like the longest stream of thought I've ever had on a podcast episode, I think. Like that's 24 minutes of one conscious stream of thought. I think it derailed for like 10 seconds at one point, but that's it. Damn. Um, briefly before we wrap this up, yes, I'm in Tokyo. Oh, um, came back from North Korea. Go, <laughs> go watch the North Korea video on my YouTube channel if you want. That was insane. Um, I can't believe how many people are rocking with it though. I was kind of low key scared that it would flop. Um, I was gonna title that video "Fish Out of Water" because that shit was gonna be flopping, but it didn't. It is almost at two million views in a week, so that's so insane to me. Um, but I'm now in Japan. I am not leaving. I don't have a return ticket. Um, I don't want to go back to North America ever if it was my choice, but alas, I will have to at some point. So for now, I'm just chilling in Tokyo. Um, enough about my ass. Let's get back to Twitter. So basically, I see where where I see this going is, y- you know, he's going to release the $8 a month verified Twitter blue subscription thing. And then, you know, I think he'll make a lot of money from it. There's a lot of people with just $8 to burn, but definitely not everyone. I I saw a poll on Twitter. It was like, would you pay for this service? And it was like 92% of people said no, but 8% of people said yes. And that 8% of people paying $8 a month is a lot of money. And that's probably enough to keep the, the website afloat. But by alienating everyone else and potentially making it into like an, a hostile website, you know, like he's reinstating every. Well, I, actually, I don't know about this. Like, <laughs> I love how I was like bashing people that are like reporting the news when they have no journalistic like integrity or like <laughs> experience or anything. And then that is literally what I'm doing this episode. But fact check me. I don't care. Fact check me. Um,. I don't know uh, if this was true, but I I believe he he's wanting to unban everyone that's ever been permanently banned. Please actually check that so I can like check in the comments because I'm lazy and I don't want to check myself. Um, that will be a crazy thing to do. I think a lot of people will get harassed online if that is the case. If you have like all these people that were banned for like a legitimate reason, like harassing people, and then they're suddenly like damn like is this shit gotham city and we're opening the gates to arkham asylum like what the fuck are we doing here elon musk we don't need to be doing that i think (laughs) this isn't even like a political take that i'm about to say but you i see so much of like (laughs) people who just want to question the norms for the sake of questioning the norms whether it be like whether you're like right wing or left wing um but like it just gets annoying people being like oh i'm gonna say something that's gonna get me canceled and i'm going to because of free speech it's like okay like go ahead say it but damn like did that did that serve any value like wow you're once again proving that we have free speech amazing like okay damn like now what we've had that shit for how many hundreds of years you're such a warrior. You basically have chainmail armor and you're gliding into battle. Like, okay. <laughs> it, it, I, I do like see how free speech is important, but it's not like it's under attack. It's such a talking point being like cancel culture is making free speech a, a, a dying piece of our culture. It's like, shut, no, it's not. No one's getting canceled. There's very few celebrities that actually get canceled. And if they did actually get canceled, it's usually because they genuinely committed a crime. Like, even if you say something horribly offensive, you can still have a career. Like, I don't want to say examples. I want to start calling people out. But, like, it, it, there's very few people whose, like, careers are actually harmed by getting quote-unquote canceled. So... I don't think there's literally a, an attack on free speech. Like, let's let's put on our big boy diapers here. Like, calm the fuck down. That's not a real thing. Anyways, I just, I worry that it's going to become, like, just a toxic place on Twitter. 
And that would suck because it used to be a fun place. I think Twitter was best at just being fun and goofy and being able to share whatever thoughts come out of your head. And I started to realize like recently, like it's kind of a waste of time for me because I have these funny, <laughs> I don't, I don't hype myself up or anything, but like I'll have funny thoughts and it'll be the type of thing where I could like craft it into a tweet or put some more time and like make it into a TikTok, like say for my spam account or something, like make it um, like a spoken thing. Uh, and a lot of the time I'll just end up making it into a tweet because it's like easier and that's kind of the beauty of Twitter but it's literally a waste of time because no one is on Twitter and I'm not the type of person well I try not to be the type of person that like does stuff just for engagement like oh why am I why am I posting on this platform if I'm not getting views like <laughs> like I don't care that much but Genuinely on Twitter, it, it is kind of hard to justify when I could make the same joke on my TikTok spam account and it would get 2 million likes, or I could type it out on Twitter and it would get 100 likes. I think that kind of becomes a deal breaker for me and kind of puts into perspective how Twitter is just dead. So that's kind of sad. And it used to be another good thing about it was it used to be such a good platform for like connecting with people and like replying to people. Um, it was very good for like building like a network of friends and stuff. And even just the feed was really good, like seeing what your friends were into, um, like what they're retweeting, what they're liking. I thought that was very cool. You don't have that on TikTok or even Instagram really unless like you're talking about stories and like people reposting stuff onto their stories like it, you don't see what other people like on other platforms which kind of sucks too so overall I think we're going to be losing a lot and I do think Twitter is going to like fully die in a year like literally give it a year and come back and like let me know if that app is still living and breathing or it's just like all NFT bots and like trying to sell like cryptocurrencies or something. I don't know. Um, in the meantime, we're gonna pause the hashtag drama mama podcast hashtag and I'll find a new situation for it. Um, a new home for it because Twitter is dead. <laughs> so I um I'm gonna wrap it up. I love y'all so much. I'm gonna go play and have fun in Tokyo. I love it here so much. I have never felt better, truly, genuinely. And I will see y'all next Wednesday. Better of the week. It's chill.